Hi, everyone. Uh, as said, I'm going to give you some perspective of, um, I would say, the, the transformation we've done in Sweden, or we're uh, sort of, I, I wouldn't say halfway through it, we're a bit longer than that, but in, in many, very many respects, we've been facing the same challenges as we see here in the UK and, uh, and try to address those. So I'm going to give you some perspective on, on uh, sort of the, what happened in Sweden, why it happened, and sort of our response to it. So in, in Sweden, already back in 2007, uh, there was an upgrade to the next generation networks that resulted in uh, increasing number of failure rates uh, in the network. So up to 20% of the alarms for social alarm um, services didn't get through to the alarm receiving centers. And unfortunately and ultimately, that resulted in, in loss of lives in Sweden because elderly persons not being able to get the, the care and the support they needed. Uh, and that called for uh, sort of a, a need and, and a clear directive to change from analog services to digital services. And I think this is a very much a, a parallel to the situation where we are in the UK right now, where we see that, yes, we are seeing uh, sort of um, more calls getting, uh, not getting through to the alarm receiving centers. We know that the analog network will, uh, over time, um, go away, or at least the service will, will be less than we see today. So this probably will, will only increase. Um, so in Sweden, from a government and a regulatory perspective, what was done is was a clear target set that by latest by 2018, all the analog services in social alarms and in telecare, they needed to be replaced by a digital solution instead. Um, and I think it was three, three aspects uh, that was key in, in making this happen. And I'm going to shortly walk through the three aspects from a Swedish perspective that sort of facilitated the, the change and the transformation. One of them was uh, a centralized, call it procurement process, or, or essentially the, uh, the Swedish Association of Local Authorities and Regions, so uh, SKL in Swedish, uh, they established uh, a technical specification and a framework for which municipalities, councils, and regions, it was clear for them what to procure, uh, what type of uh, sort of technical requirements to put on the suppliers, what type of serv service levels requirements to put on the, on the suppliers. Um, so it was a clear help for uh, the municipalities and the regions to be able to know what to tender for and what kind of technology and services to, to procure. And I think as we see today, 70%, and I think the latest frame agreement from SKL, that number is, is even higher. So at least 70% of all the, the tenders that are done in Sweden now for social alarms and telecare are based on the SKL framework that they have provided. Uh, the, the second aspect, uh, facilitating the change, uh, and I would say very much from, one, a financial perspective, and two, from a sort of quality of service and ownership perspective, was basically a, a difference in business model. Previously in Sweden, going back then 10 years from now, uh, it was quite similar to the situation here in the UK. You, you bought your analog alarms, you installed them in the field, uh, you had a requirement that uh, the end user had a connection, uh, PSTN line, to the alarm receiving center, and you had an alarm receiving center. What happened in Sweden was a more, call it, telecare as a service model. So together with the SKL framework, what they developed, uh, together I would say with, with authorities and industry, was a more service-based model where most municipalities today, they buy social alarm and telecare as a service. Meaning that from the supplier, they get the device, 
they get the connectivity, and they get the ARC response. That, of course, uh, one, it helped municipalities sort of finance the, tra the transformation, going from looking at big capex investments in order to be able to replace the, the digital alarms, or sorry, analog alarms. They were able to procure it as a service where the typical contract length is two to four years, and uh, where the suppliers basically rent out the alarms and during this uh, agreement period. So they get the, the digital alarms, they get the connectivity that is typically uh, over the mobile network, uh, and the ARC response. That for a cost that's typically in the Swedish municipalities today between 15 and, and 20 pounds for that service uh, per user and month. Besides sort of facilitating uh, the chain from a financial perspective, it also made a, a clearer uh, responsibility part where the municipality now have sort of one point of contact and one responsible entity for the service because it's the same supplier of the device, of the connectivity and of the ARC response. So you get sort of full ownership for actually making sure that the service is up and working all the time. And three, um, together with, as we said, uh, the framework, uh, the change in sort of from uh, uh, change to a service-based model. The third part was uh, standardization making sure that there was uh, sort of standards that were put on the suppliers and on the service, uh, making sure that it's, it's one, one sort of same standard that everyone needs to uh, adhere to. And most important of that was the SCAPE protocol. That's now, uh, so every Swedish uh, supplier needs to be able to deliver the SCAPE protocol. And that also made a big freedom of choice from uh, a municipality or regional perspective, uh, both looking at the device piece, so the hardware, but also the uh, alarm receiving center, because with the standard protocol, everyone was making sure that regardless of what device you buy from what manufacturer and what alarm receiving center you choose and what software you have in the alarm receiving center, the connection between the two will work uh, as it should. So I think those three aspects uh, in the frame agreement, the standards part, and the business model, uh, those three were key in making sure the transformation happened in Sweden. And I think looking at the, uh, the publications here from, uh, from TSA uh, that we've seen during this conference, I think uh, a number of the things that are uh, being sort of presented as prerequisite for facilitating the change here in the UK are very similar to the ones that we've seen in Sweden being key uh, for making it happen. <clears throat> Maybe just to give you some, uh, some understanding. So Sweden today, we have around uh, 290 municipalities of which we in Doro Care, we service 150 of them. There's 240,000 social alarms installed in Sweden today, um, and of which I would say at least 140,000 are, are digital today. Um, and that number is increasing, uh, is increasing every, I would say every month. Just looking this year, there will probably be around 70 to 75,000 connections being tendered for in Sweden. And 100% of all the tenders are, are purely digital. Uh, most of the connectivity piece is today uh, handled over uh, mobile networks. Um, and from our perspective, we are running two ARCs in Sweden uh, with around 85,000 connections, sorry, 90,000 connections, uh, where at least 90% uh, are digital connections. So from that perspective, I think that the, the digital telecare, uh, <laughs> it's, it's here now, it's here to stay. Uh, it's definitely the right solution for today. 
and the shift is needed here in the UK as well. And it's also the right solution for tomorrow, uh, bringing on new technological solutions together with digital telecare. Thank you.